everyone this is Angie at Stampin' with Amore and today I have another box to share with you this one is actually a requested box um, from one of my followers and um, she actually wanted a larger like box for cookies or cupcakes or cakes or anything and this would be perfect for the holidays to give to your neighbors or friends and this is actually going to be the largest that I can make because with this I'm using two full 12 by 12 sheets of paper um, and so this is what I'm sharing today I'm I am going to do one with a window in it I'm going to attempt <laughs> to make a window in it because sometimes when you make them this large they get little creases from uh, you have to fold the paper over the framelit and sometimes it shows but sometimes it's not that bad so we'll try it and we'll see how it comes but I wanted to show you one with a window because you know when you give cookies at the holidays they're usually really pretty and stuff and a lot of times I think it's so pretty just to see them so I wanted to show you this because these are some of the new products coming September 1st in the new holiday catalog. And this is one of the stamp sets. This stamp set is one of my favorites. It's kind of retro, but I love this. So I used this one, Christmas Wishes, and then this is going to be some of the new ribbon. Isn't that gorgeous? I love this ribbon. This is our new Subtle Stripe Satin Ribbon and it's one and a quarter inches wide so it's so pretty and it ties so pretty. So that's what I used on this box and I wanted to share that with you because I thought that would be really really cute for a gift for the holidays. You can put a small gift in this box. Heck, this box is six by six by three inches high so it's really a good size box anyway let's go ahead and get started with it so you are going to need two pieces of 12 by 12 cardstock now you know how i brag on the stampin up cardstock because it's a much heavier weight than you'll find at your local um, craft store that's one of the reasons i think i've told you before why I joined Stampin' Up! because I love the paper. The quality is really, really good. Now Stampin' Up! also has come out with a heavy 100 pound cardstock. I haven't used it yet. I have purchased it and I will, I don't have a 12 by 12 and I'm not even sure if it comes in 12 by 12. I'll have to check that out for you. But um, I wanted to do this in crumb cake to show you that you know how the regular bakery boxes usually look so this is what we're gonna do and then uh, you also need a piece of window sheet that's five and a half by five and a half so let's get started in scoring this it's very easy scoring and we're gonna score both of them exactly the same so let's get my trimmer scoring tool up here so the what we're going to do here is you are going to score it at 3 inches and at 9 inches. And then you're going to turn it a quarter of a turn and you're going to score it again 3 inches and 9 inches. And then we're going to grab the other piece and we're going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to do it at 3 inches and 9 And then three inches and nine. Okay, so that is it for our scoring. Okay, so let's go ahead and make the bo bottom of the box first. I'm using my large scissors because this is a big piece of paper. So what you're going to do is all you're going to do is cut up these score marks to the first score mark and do the same on this side and I like to cut into these a little bit it just makes it a little bit easier to fold in don't cut in the center flap cut into your your um, end flap and then we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side let's cut up here And 
and then do the same on this one. Okay, now all we have to do is sharpen our score marks. Now what we're going to do is on the these flaps on the outside and we're going to put adhesive. Use your tear and tape because it's super strong. Now I haven't tested out the fast food as, as, far, as, as far as putting cookies or anything heavy in a box using it. And so right now I am not going to recommend I'm going to use it for this because it just takes less time than the tear and tape. But it is super heavy duty. This I love the fast fuse. So you can try it if you like. But like I said, I haven't put anything in a box that's heavy with it yet. Okay, so all these four flaps have adhesive. Now just pull up your and line up your edges. Make sure you keep your box square. And this is going to just be the bottom. See how quick and easy that is? So let's set that aside and let's go ahead and do the top piece. Now the first thing you're going to do is you are going to cut two, these two corner pieces off right here. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay. Alright, so the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to cut up these. And I'm going to cut into these again. And then do the same on this other side. It's hard to maneuver this big of a piece of paper, uh, paper here in the video so I know you're missing some of it so I hope you can see how I cut that let's put it this way and see if you can see it a little better so let's go ahead and sharpen all our score marks on here now I'm using this framelit which is project life cards and label framelit um, it's usually used for your project life um, cards and stuff. Here is what the other ones look like. It is a larger one. And I thought this just fit perfect in the center, so that's why I'm using this. So let me grab the big shot real quick. And my plates. So we're going to put our magnetic plate down and one mat. And I know these are really used, well loved. So what I'm going to do first is set, and you can see how wide that is. That's why I said it's going to probably leave a little bit of a, because I'm going to have to fold these over on top. So let's center this as well as I can see, because I can't get my head over it. If you don't have the magnetic uh, platform, go ahead and use a piece of washi tape to hold it down. And I'm going to even go ahead and put a piece on here to make sure it stays in place where I want it. So just stick, you can stick a couple pieces on. And so I'm going to fold that over, fold those over also, but don't just, and then we're going to run this through. And I hope I got that centered sometimes. Let me send, there we go. I don't want it to rip my cardstock. It's, got, it's normal to make those no noises, especially when you're going through a, a thick piece. All right, so let me move these out of the way and see how we get some of that marking, which it's not really that bad. We're going to, we'll put that on the inside piece. So it's going to be very little that you see. All right. If anybody has any hints or clues on how to do it without making those marks, 
just leave me a comment. <laughs> I would love to know, when, it, especially when it's a big piece. I don't have that problem when it's small. Okay, so I'm going to use some fast fuse and attach my window sheet. So let's put that window sheet on here. I love the windows, so I would really be curious if anybody has an answer to that. Okay, so then we're going to put adhesive again on all these two flaps here. Be generous with the adhesive, especially if you're giving it as a gift. And then we'll pull these up and line them up also. And now we're going to put adhesive on this side right here. So you want to put it all the way and on the end to be sure you get some on the end. Okay, so let's bring in our bottom of, bo of the box. And what we're going to do is we're going to attach it. Now I like the little flaps you can see right here where the flap that shows on the inside. I don't like to put it on the back. I like to put it on the sides so when you open it you can't really see it. So, I mean, that's just being picky. You don't have to... Now we're going to line this up, I hope you can see this, to the very edge, but you want to make sure, leave a tiny bit of a space so that your box will close. You don't want it to, to, you want your flap to be able to close. So you can't really see that it's attached there. And now I forgot one step, which is much easier if you do it before, but to make this box look more professional and, and close, I usually mark it two and a half inches here, which I'm going to go ahead and do that to show you. And I'm just going to use a little bit of a, of a pencil mark. If I can find my pencil now. All right. So I'm just going to mark a little mark there because I want these to be even. And then two and a half on this side also. And so that's just giving me a guide because I'm going to cut it from that point all the way to the corner. And then we'll do the same on this side. Now I usually do this before I put it together, but I forgot to show you. Okay, so it has these little flaps on the side. And it makes it easier for you to close your box. So look at that so cute you can mat this if you want or I like it plain actually now to kind of dress this one up um, I'm not going to put a ribbon you can put a ribbon if you want but I'm going to use some of our lots of labels framelits and I actually already cut these out so I didn't take so much time um, this is our new Del uh, delightful Dijon and then this is just very vanilla and I'm going to go ahead and stamp that and I'm going to stamp it with a little um, stamp from my Num Num. And it says, a little lovin' from my oven. So the stamp set is this Num Num. It's got a bunch for treat boxes and stuff. So let me go ahead and stamp that with our new archival black ink from Stampin' Up. I'm super excited that we got this ink. It's so crisp and clear. sure this is totally and this is a very firm pad on this stamp set so I'm going to put that right there look how beautiful that is I love this new ink pad okay so the uh, these are the lot uh, did I tell you it's the um, lots of labels framelits so I'm gonna go ahead and use some dimensionals and I'm gonna just you know what? I'm going to I'm not going to use dimensionals on this cuz I want to put a flower on here. So let's just go ahead and add our fast fuse right now. So this is just going to be a little label to stick on the box. And I made out of our new cotton paper, I made a little rose using our spiral uh, rose dye. 
and it's so cute and it's in the same color as this I this one is a single and then I made this one as a with it as a double so I used two of the spiral flowers and I just put one inside the other so pretty and this is our cotton paper it's really pretty and then I cut some little leaves out um, using the cotton paper also so I am going to go ahead and attach with glue dots where did they go my bench is actually really clean now I cleaned it the other day because you know from doing convention projects um, well it was a total mess and so now of course I can't find my glue dots so I am going to use let's see I'm gonna use the fast fuse I had them out I took them out for this project so I'm just gonna add a little bit of fast fuse here to attach my rows I think I'm gonna use which one should I use should I use the big one uh, I don't know I'm just gonna use the one I made for this because I thought it'd be match everything else and then we're just gonna add the leaves so I guess I'm gonna add my leaves using the fast fuse because I don't know what I did with those glue dots I was gonna use glue dots I'm just gonna add a few leaves here these are really easy just to cut out I'm going to end up gluing it to the let's see if you want to spray this with water it will you can flatten it out really good but I think that's cute so I'm gonna go ahead and again use my fast fuse I, this is making it a little bit harder for me because I don't have my glue dots use the glue dots it'll be a lot easier <laughs> see I'm smashing everything up but then you can just add that to the top of your box you can still see and this could be more for a birthday or just a general gift but I think that's a cute little tag to put on there so anyway that's it everyone here's the holiday one that I made super cute I love this and I love the ribbon is my favorite part of it you can put a ribbon on here and stuff to dress it up as much as you want or dress it down um, so if you need any supplies for this project, you can go to my blog at stampingwithamore.com and shop right from my blog. Um, if you do not have a demonstrator and you'd like to have a holiday catalog, please contact me in the contact section on my blog and I'd be happy to send you one. For those of you who are my existing customers and have placed an order within the last year, you will have one delivered to your door by mail. So um, thanks everyone. I hope you enjoyed this project. It's really a good size box and this would make a really cute gift for a friend or neighbor or a relative. So hope you enjoyed it. Have a blessed day everyone and I'll see you next time. Bye.